I'm telling you folks, that concert grand piano is as long as from my west door to this east window. Almost. Short two or three feet. And it's a sign way. And she just sat down. She took the cover off of it. Huge cover. And she just sat down and she started to play. And when I heard that concert grand, my soul left my body. You never heard such quality music. Oh, it was superb. And I was in ecstasy, just that I heard the first four or five notes. And then I watched her fingers go up and down that keyboard. You couldn't be closer to heaven than that. And she played and she played and she played. And she played Debussy and she played, of course, the great technician of the piano, Chopin. Uh, she played uh, Mendelssohn's. Wait a second. Was it Mendelssohn's piano concerto, which she has done in Carnegie? She's, well, she's played in Carnegie Hall. She's played in Italy. She got standing ovation. She played in the uh, Ukraine, in Russia. An accomplished, accomplished artist. What was it? Whose piano concerto was it first? It was so beautiful. And we just heard it on WQSR as we were driving home. I guess it was my muscle. Although, I sort of doubt it. There's a joke about that, you know, the... Uh, Newspaper reporter asked the piano soloist, why did you choose to play Beethoven's fourth piano concerto? And he thought a long time, he says, well, that's what the orchestra was playing. And so the fellowship ended at 11.30 years so old and I went to sleep. And the next morning is Valentine's Day and I'm due in court for the oral argument at 9 o'clock. What is on the ground? Ice, snow, sleet, slush. And do I even bother to go? The court's not going to be open. How can the judges get there? So at 6 o'clock, after the devotions, first thing in the morning, you spend your own time with God, and it was terrific. What was the passage? Uh... I know what the passage was, what number was it? And it said, You serve God with your lips, and you serve God with your heart. And all day long, I said that over and over and over again. And every 15 minutes, all day long, I rejoice. And I said that passage. I'll tell you what it is just a second. It's Mark. You honor God with your lips, and you honor God with your heart. Mark 7. And then around about 7, I started you hooing. <laughs> and the bedroom I stayed in, wow. Wow. And the private bathroom, wow. The whole house. I, I didn't know where I was. I couldn't find my way from one room to the other. It was so big and so well appointed. Uh, so I started you hooing, Suzanne. And she came from her luxurious bedroom which was twice the size of mine. And by the way, it's all windows. And you can see, look out and see the Hudson River. And the bedroom that I stayed in had a, what would you call it? It was like a fortress. It was like a fort. It was like an esplanade. And where there was a chaise lounge and something. So you could sit outdoors on the second floor. It looked like a parapet around it. And uh, I said, Suzanne, i got to go. I, this is what I came for. Regardless of the weather, I have to try. I have to do my part. I said, can you get a cab? Well, she did a superb job, skillful job, of calling a cab and getting them to come up there in Doss Ferry, way up on top of a steep, slippery hill, 
covered with sleet and ice. And she talked them into it. And I said, ask them how much the fare is to go from Dobbs Ferry to White Plains, which must be 15 miles. And uh, they said, $29. I said, make it 30 I'll be there at 8 o'clock. It was 5 minutes to 8. I gathered up everything as fast as I could. I didn't see Patrick, and Patrick was angry about that, that I left without saying goodbye to him, but I think he was in the shower or somewhere. And uh, I, the dispatcher said that, or the owner of the cab company said they would not come up the private driver. They would not come up the, the private road. They live on a private road, their own street. So Suzanne says, you walk down to the, that part of the drive and where it curves, you turn left and you turn right again and you go out onto Clinton Street, where it is. And so I did. And I was wearing this hat and my quilt coat. And this poor hat, I stood and waited for the cab. He didn't come. Fifteen minutes. I stood as well as I could under the shelter of a pine tree, which is not the best shelter. And I heard sleep, you know, hitting my hat for 15 minutes. And look at this hat. It didn't phase it a bit. And so after 15 minutes, my fingers were freezing and my toes were freezing and I walked back up that long, long private road and that long, long curving private driveway. And Patrick tells me he's angry at me and I just ran out on him. And, uh, but lo and behold, here comes the cat. Well, give that man credit. And he started driving. And to come to find out, he was worked for the Department of Highways uh, for the town of Greenberg for 26 years. So he knew all about salt and sand and slipperiness, didn't he? And he certainly knew what to do when we started to slip and slide all over the Sawmill Parkway. He just handled it so beautifully, and he does it with one hand. His name's Tony. And then he calls the dispatcher and the dispatcher and asks the dispatcher to call the courts. And the dispatcher says all county and federal courts are closed today. Well, I said, that's it, Tony. I've done my part. Turn around. Take me back to Dobbs Ferry. He says, well, you know, you can't really trust those uh, announcements. You don't know whether it was made last night or not. And he says, you paid for the fare. It was $29. I, I gave him 35 I paid him right up front. And, and he said, you paid for the fare. I'm going to take you to 140 Grand Street and see if the courts are open. Well, we stopped on the way uh, at White Plains Public Access, five minutes to nine, and uh, it wasn't open, and went across the street to White Plains Courthouse and the police station, and uh, they weren't open yet. Yet there were all these uh, court officers there, and there's one that I like. His name is Tom Slater. He's a darling. And uh, he tried to find out if the White Plains Court was going to be open. He asked Paul Friedman the Small Plains Court, and Paul Friedman said, I'm waiting to find out. So uh, uh, Tony charged me just $5 for that stop, two stops. And we went to 140 grand, and I went in. And sure enough, people were going into the courtrooms, or into the building. There's only a couple, two, three courtrooms there, because it's rented. Uh, it doesn't belong to this county. And Gary was there, and he didn't require any show uh, photo ID because I've known Gary for 10 years, so I guess he knew who I was. And uh, I went back and I said, Tony, you're right. The announcement was wrong. The courts are open. I went up to the ninth floor of the penthouse to find Anthony Scarpino, who has been pretty close to me since 1992, I would say. And he's a surrogate judge, and he's also a head of matrimony for the uh, county of Westchester. I want to insert here a rumor that I heard that Nikolai, the chief administrative judge for the Westchester County, is going to be out in April, and that uh, Tony Scarpino is going to be the chief administrative judge. Now let's see if that comes true. Okay, back to today, uh, Valentine's Day, and a couple of judges are there, but the judge from Suffolk County 
is not there. The Ninth and Tenth Judicial Districts cover Suffolk and Nassau and Rockland and Westchester and Dutchess and uh, Orange County. Would that be it? Yes, it is. Because Columbia County's Court of Appeals is the Supreme Court itself. Uh, the Columbia County Supreme Court. So, they decide after waiting around for an hour or so, and there was a very obnoxious uh, so-called court officer there, his name was Mean. He was extremely rude and crude. Uh, he was sassy and obstreperous, and I said to him when I saw him, because I thought I knew him, I said, hey, and he said, you don't know me well enough to call me, say, hey, to me. And uh, I said, oh, you're making a bad report for yourself. He said, you've been saying bad things about people for years. And uh, I started taking notes, and he says, you get your notebook out of my face. And I said, what's your name? He says, it's on my chest, read it. And I said, I don't know any statute that says I have to read to your chest. And uh, it was Mia. And I think his first name is Teddy. So he was that way. And that was terrible. You know, it was immature. Uh, it was misconduct. It's going to go on his personal record. I'll make the report for him. I've already made it. And sent it to the... Uh, Office of Court Administration. It was no, it was bad that he did that. And then he strutted around, and he was an exhibitionist for an hour, and he was a big shot. And after that, I would have no uh, conversation with him. Anyhow, Tannenbaum. They they decided to start without Tannenbaum, who was a Suffolk County judge. And so, but he was on his way from Suffolk County. And so they used Westchester County clerk, McNichols, didn't make it. And the Westchester, and the uh, appellate term on so called court officer, a misnomer, he didn't make it. So they started using Westchester people. And a uh, suffragan clerk announced that they were waiting for Judge Tannenbaum to come from Suffolk. And then I came into the uh, courtroom to ask him a question. He says, you can't come in here. I can't, I can't talk to you. And I said, why not? I paid. Now, isn't that ridiculous? These are the people's court. These insiders think they own them. So that was bad. And I forgot to give this name. He should have a bad report going on his personnel record. That is not the spirit of the courts. The spirit of the court is to help justice. And so I all the time and up and down the stairs uh, looking for Anthony Scarpino. Come to find out Anthony Scarpino who only lives up here in North White Plains or so, uh, North Castle. He's nearer than the Yonkers judge who was John LaCava, his first time on. And uh, he's nearer than Tannenbaum and Suffolk, and I don't know where Rudolph comes from, but Anthony couldn't even get in from North Castle, which you can practically see from White Plains. And so I talked to Amy up there and to Jody up there in uh, the law department of the surrogate court. And I saw a man being given the runaround the way Suzanne McCormick has been for uh, all these years since 1987 and uh, when the man got in the elevator with me I told him I said these people are crooks they're going to take every cent that you got they're going to steal and he was sort of nonplussed by that I guess shocked and then I went up the elevator again. I couldn't find Anthony Scarpino so I gave up on that but this I want to know why was the courtroom door locked and there were people inside of it. Why was a courtroom door locked on the 8th floor of 140 Grand Street and there's people inside? Courtroom doors have to be open to the public. The public is paying for them. 
Uh, by the way, Anthony, they, they call it 140 Grand Street. Well, it's really grand to see his chambers on the uh, penthouse that you are paying for, you taxpayers. So I went in, and two judges were at work. And there were only about 15 people uh, in the peanut gallery when cases were being heard. And this Westchester County clerk, who was so serious, dead serious, I came over and asked me, did I want to wait for Tannenbaum, or did I want to appear before these two judges? And if I appeared to, to these two judges, Tannenbaum would review the file. Well, you can't believe it. A two-hour report on the case Thundora vs. Charles F. Dolan and Cablevision Systems Corporation. This case was in the Rye City Court. It was abused for personal interest by Peter Lane, city judge, city court of Rye. Uh, the other bad actors are Robert M. Callaghy, a liar for hire from the liar for hire law firm, Sally Stevens, Burke and Burke. And Christine Savarino. Uh, I've told the sto whole story in great detail on the past four half-hour programs. Now, I'm going to invite you to the Supreme Court, County of Westchester, State of New York, to the appellate term, the appeals court. The court that hears appeals only from municipalities. The appellate division hears cases from the county courts. This happened on Valentine's Day, February the 14th, 2007, Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. A day of pelting sleet, snow, slush, ice, slipperiness, and right now I'm taking you to the sixth floor of 140 Grand Street, exuding the usual wealth of Westchester. And we have waited for Judge Tannenbaum to come through all this sleep, and give him credit, he did. He came all the way from Suffolk County to Westchester County. Rudolph Kenneth W. is the presiding justice. He sits in the middle. And now we have a brand new judge on the appellate term, John LaCava, a Supreme Court judge uh, no, I don't know if he's up to Supreme Court now or not, but when I knew him, he was county court. That's the criminal court. For years. We've known him ever since 1992, Franklin and I. And April, the suffragan court clerk, because the appellate term, McNichols, was slipping and sliding all over Route I-95, getting off at exit 18 uh, and dodging tractor trailers that had just jackknifed and cars that had been turned upside down. We dodged a car that had hit the rail on the sawmill. Uh, and they decided not to wait any longer after waiting an hour for Judge Tanmore, but the two of the judges to go ahead. It'll be LaCava and uh, Rudolph. Don't you say that. Red nosed reindeer. Don't you say that. Uh, in April, the clerk says, You have a choice. Uh, you can go before these two judges alone and then let Tannenbaum review it on paper. Don't you ever believe that? They don't read anything. It's my supposition. Uh, and or you can wait for Tannenbaum. And I said, well, I'll have to reserve on that. I'll have to think about that. She said, well, you'll have to let me know because this, right after this case is argued because you're due next. And I said, but they always save me for less. 
courts. They don't want anybody to hear what I have to say about the courts. And I also, I told April, the suffragian clerk, that I like April better than I like February as to what was coming down outside. Well, I was wrong. They didn't leave me for last. There was one case after mine, and three people actually heard what I had to say in the gallery. Okay. Now, here's how it started. The case is called, you won't be able to decipher it on, on, on this. Uh, but the case was called, April says, Glendora versus Charles F. Dolan and Cable Vision Systems Corporation. So I gather up all the papers. You know, this is my oral argument. And I said, Well, I guess that's the first time you ever heard that in the appeals court, isn't it? Okay, let's see if we can get some more audio. And I think you deserve a bad decision coming from Suffolk County and getting here and the rest of you too. And I came from Columbia County and I had left yesterday. And I had spent $53, $35, and $5 in transportation. And I came down here just to ask you to be my Valentine. Now, <laughs> and I brought my heart. Okay, I came down here just to be your Valentine. And Rudolph said, he's the presiding justice, and he said, did you bring any candy? And I said, yes, and I brought my heart. case, folks, <clears throat> is 11 volumes and it's 12 inches. Did you read it? Stony silence. And then I said, there's a joke about that. Do you want to hear it? And Rudolph, the presiding justice, says, we could use a joke. And so I told him this joke. about that. Would you like to hear it? Good. The church had a Bible-selling contest, and the man who sold the most Bibles stuttered. He stuttered badly. And so the person had said, what did you do to sell the most Bibles? And he said, I, 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 well, let me tell you how they left. They actually did laugh. It is nearly imperceptible, but they did. The judge on the right, he went, <laughs> the judge in the middle, he went, <laughs> and the judge on the end went, <laughs> they laughed, and they laughed in single file. And then Rudolph says to me, are you going to read the Bible to me? And I laughed at that. But I should have said yes. Leviticus 13. Do no injustice in your judgment. Leviticus 
do no injustice in your judgment. Okay, let us continue with what Glendora said at the oral argument and what other people said. <laughs> now, now, what did Glendora so tell Bill and Cable Vision for? For refusing to return 53 videotapes from the chat with Glendora, which is on 53 TV stations. And she sold for 2,000 damages for that. Did Golan Cable Vision appear? No. Well, who did? No, honey, I never seen an application for poor person relief. Rudolph said, you're suing because they denied your application for poor person relief. And I said, no, honey, I never made an application for poor person relief. I asked for $1,300 for the court to pay for the minutes. And so Rudolph starts going through his stack of papers. I never made any application for an ISP. Okay. He's going through his papers, looking for it. I'm telling the appellate term that they ruled in my favor on two things. One, that the appellate, that the Rye Court did have jurisdiction over Charles F. Dolan, whether he lived in Nassau County or not. His name was all over the county clerk's office as the chief executive officer of Cablevision. So the court obviously had jurisdiction over him. The second thing the appellate term said was to reverse. Peter Lane denied Glendora the $3,000. The reverse of deny is grant. So the appellate term told Peter Lane to grant Glendora the $3,000 and he didn't do it. And he defied them. Just let me back up a tiny bit, I guess. Precluded Glendora from reading your order into the record? He didn't want people to know what you said. You gave me two things. You gave me reversal, which means the reversal, the reverse of reverse, okay, the reverse of, uh, it was He denied $3,000, and the reverse of deny is grant. He did not give me the $3,000, and he should have done that. And then the other thing, uh, that you gave me was your kitchen over Charles Dolan. Well, that's prima facie. You just go to the county court across the street and you can tell Dolan's name all through it. He may not be a domiciliary, 
of uh, Westchester County, down the shore of Nassau County, but uh, the court had to...